thought UQM, what is it? What does it stand for? What do you guys do here? The company was originally called Unique Mobility, and we developed a lot of advanced vehicles, actually built 50 all-electric cars in the late 70s. Got involved in electric motors in the uh, mid-80s, and then focused on electric propulsion systems for electric and hybrid vehicles. You were involved in EVs long before they were cool? The company was. I joined the company in 92 after uh, 16 years with John Deere. And they were looking to sort of to advance into the manufacturing, and it took a lot longer to get there than I expected, but we're now there. Right. So we've made a big step up this year. So this is quite a time for UQM as far as the, you know, the, the onslaught of EVs we're about to see. It's huge. But we've been up and down this road many times. We went through the California initiative when they were going to have all electric cars, and we survived that trip. A lot of companies didn't, but we uh, decided not to bet the company and hung out of our cash with both hands and kept focusing on our technology. And as a net result of that, we've uh, now reached the point where we're now participant in this big move on electrification internationally. So UQM uh, is based here, but it was actually enticed to leave. Uh, what, what happened there? Why did you stay here? Well, with all this push in electric vehicles and, and technology, we've been asked to, to move to other states. We've been uh, given tax incentives, incentives to move to states like New York, uh, South Carolina, and others. And we chose to stay here for a lot of reasons. I mean, we've, we've been based here. Our employees are here. Uh, this is a, there's a high-tech corridor that runs from um, basically the Wyoming border all the way down to Colorado Springs. And there's all types of companies and technology here, good access to, to, to high-tech talent. Uh, we get a lot of our local manufacturing done, printed right. circuit boards and computer technology, which we use in our systems. And what about green jobs? Is this a good place to, to find them, to create them? It's probably the best. I mean, there's a big push on solar, wind turbines, and we're, you know, we're a little different. We're in the sort of automotive, truck, bus, propulsion world, but all of our technology is based on uh, software, uh, power electronics, and, uh, and a, some rotating machinery. We, we assemble here, we don't do base manufacturing here. Yeah, some might think you, you should be in Detroit. Well, yeah, but we, you, you, that's one argument, but we don't do any base manufacturing. Right. We're an assembler. So we, uh, we uh, design everything about our products, we, we source internationally, so we get parts out of, a lot out of China, all over the world. We bring them here and we do final assembly, test, pack out, and then ship to our customers, which include companies in California, uh, the Midwest, and in fact, uh, Europe and Asia. So UQM is, is making these uh, motors for electric vehicles, which is certainly seems to be the future in you know the clean tech uh, industry. Uh, where, how do you see UQM uh, contributing to uh, green jobs? Well, we've, we've, with this new facility, obviously, which has a lot more room for growth, we're going to be ramping up to about 300 people with a production launch for our first uh, first volume customer. We're currently at 78. And uh, in order to get the grant, which we were awarded by the government, we showed a path to actually having several thousand employees working in this facility. And we can accommodate them here. Okay, and what's the timeline for that? Depends on how, how fast the market materializes. The day we got the stimulus grant, a $45 million grant for this little company, and this was a huge, huge uh, achievement because there were seven companies selected on the uh, for components for electric vehicles. Little companies like General Motors, Ford, Delphi, Allison Transmission, Doko Ramey, Magna, and UQM Technologies. We were the only really tiny company, and the only company in Colorado, and uh, that, that really brought us into to the forefront. The local paper, the Longmont uh, uh, Times Call, wrote an article about our company the day after the grant, and they were talking about jobs and all the impact of the stimulus grant, and I said, well, the stimulus doesn't create jobs. Orders create jobs. And, and that's, I mean, you can stimulate all day, but until people want to buy a product, you can justify the investments. You can't really create the jobs uh, that, that in order to, to earn the money to pay the people for the work. And when uh, Biden was here, we had a chance to have a fairly lengthy conversation in the back before the presentations were made. And, and I discussed this topic with Biden, and he came out to, to 800 people that were in this building. And uh, he, he brought up the point. He says, yeah, I was talking to Rankin out back, and uh, he made a point that this, the students didn't create jobs. And he said, orders create jobs. And he, he, he gave me, you know, sort of made a big deal about that and gave me credit he for it. He stole your line. Well, he, he gave me credit oh, for okay. it. Oh, okay. It was great. And now seeing that we're on the advent of, you know, a real explosion of electric vehicles, you must really feel like you're at the forefront of that. We are definitely prepared for success. We, uh, we've got a new production line that uh, produces the motor, the blue part back behind me. And then the power electronic control systems are produced on a line, the green line right behind me. The motors that we make on this production line, uh, which is set up to produce one every six minutes, yeah. it's not yet up to run. We've just now got this line in place. It's been uh, validated and debugged, and we're in the process now of moving product off the line and shipping uh, what's called production validation units to our customer. The motor that comes off that line is only 11 inches in diameter and is 134 horsepower. 
a version of that motor will be uh, is is already being provided to customers uh, in Europe at 135 kilowatts, which is 182 horsepower. This is a motor that's the size of a piece of paper in diameter, wow. and 9.8 uh, inches long, and puts out that level of power. That's why we're uh, you know, being pursued by many companies internationally for our systems to be used in both electric and hybrid vehicles. Tell me just a little bit more about uh, uh, Governor Ritter and what you see as his, uh, his energy accomplishments. Do you think he's done a good job in making that a priority here? I think he's done an excellent job. I mean, he, uh, uh, you know, we, we had a, an excellent, we had a great opportunity to, to showcase our company with the governor two years ago. We had our annual meeting in Golden, Colorado. And we had an all-electric vehicle at the annual meeting from a company called Code Automotive, uh, our first volume production customer, a startup in California that's going to be introducing a four-door sedan. And we had the vehicle at the uh, at our annual meeting, and the governor had a chance to drive the vehicle, and it was it was quite a day for our company because it came right off the heels of uh, uh, the stimulus grant. And the governor actually attended the annual meeting, made an opening presentation to all of our investors, and then uh, of course had a chance to see and drive the car. And that was carried on national news uh, that particular day. And how do you think um, Governor Ritter has done over the years as far as uh, ener clean energy, the old energies and the new ones? I think uh, on the old energies, obviously, we've got a lot of uh, natural resources here, the biggest one being sun, uh, wind, a fair amount of wind in Colorado, but we have coal, natural gas reserves. And I think the blend of, of those uh, energy sources with the new is, is real. It gives us choices. And uh, the big push on, on uh, really leveraging the technology base of this state, whether it's the, the collected uh, universities that are here, the government organization, in particular Enroll, um, into bringing, bringing in, helping, helping cause the solar with a bound, uh, wind uh, activities as well as you know our activities in the state are, are real and I think are a credit to the governor. He's had a team. I mean, there's, there's a lot of organizations that are motivated to get this done. And I think on his tenure as governor, he's done a great job of getting this state recognized in a, in a leadership position. And I honestly and sincerely believe that.